Unique New York. Unique New York. <laughs> Unique New York. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back into the Road to Full Stack Developer Series. I am Franklin, and today we are going to set up iTerm2, the Zish shell, and oh my Zish, the framework, in hopefully under 10 minutes, getting you going and ready to develop. This is for Mac OS, which is a Unix unix based distribution as well as uh, any linux distribution most linux systems have everything that we need here the windows side of things i'm not going to be handling there are some ways to do this and you can kind of look in how to do this with windows but there are certain tools that we are going to be using that are not available on windows operating system i have open right now the terminal uh, the standard terminal that comes with mac os and for those of you that don't want to use iTerm2, a terminal emulator, um, and you want to stick to the standard terminal and you just want to use a di uh, like a different shell, whether it's Bash or Fish, there is a little guide provided by Flavio Copes on how to set up your macOS terminal. And he will show you how to do that and use a theme like uh, Dracula um, that you can download and all of that. He is, however, going to suggest using the Fish shell uh, and there is some setup and stuff to read on that specifically. However, I am going to post a, I guess, less bias opinion, um, quick article from a while ago on Bash, Zish, and Fish, all of the Linux shells, essentially. Um, Bash, which is known as the Born Again shell. It's the most comics, uh, common Linux shell out there, and it's typically already existing and installed on Linux-based systems. This is why one reason a lot of people will buy Macs for when they're starting to learn to develop, because everything in the terminal just comes ready to go. But if you didn't know that, that's why you usually get a Mac. You can get a system that has Linux, a Linux distribution on it, and get going right away with Bash as well. But Bash is, is fantastic. Uh, the Zish shell is really not any different than the Bash shell. Everything you get with Zish uh, allows you to have everything you'd have with Bash. The only difference is you get a framework called, oh my Zish, and it is so good. It is awesome. It has over 1,200, let me pull it up here. Uh, it has over 1,200 plus contributors. It has 200 plus different plugins, and it also has over 140 themes that you can just instantly install and get going with, and that's really, really powerful and really cool. This is their actual website, omyzish, well, omyz.zish. Uh, some people will call Zish the Z shell. So that being said, I'll link those below, but we are going to dive right in to actually using Zish and installing it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is install Zish. Now, we would like to uh, go ahead and just work with Zish, but we are also wanting to use a terminal emulator, iTerm2. You can use and install Zish without iTerm2, but I'm going to be installing iTerm2, as well as I'm going to be installing Homebrew, which is a package manager for Mac OS or Linux. And this is something that you can't get with Windows, particularly Homebrew. And it's very powerful for installing a number of development tools that throughout this series we're gonna be installing so you should probably get homebrew uh, and so this is the command that we're going to run you would copy it you open up your standard terminal pre-built in paste it and run it now for me it is going to confirm uh, as, as it is with you that it's going to install in your user directory of the local directory uh, a bin slash brew uh, a share slash doc slash homebrew a couple of other files and a slash homebrew It'll also say here, the Xcode command line tools will be installed. Now the Xcode command line tools installation is a lengthy one. I think I, if I recall a long time ago or anytime I have to set up a new system, it's like 30 minutes or 40 minutes. So you might wanna just install it and pause this right here. I would highly recommend installing the Xcode command line tools, Xcode in general, because you will use it in development environments later on. And it just makes sense. So. I'm gonna pause it here. I am not going to press return and do that just in case for some reason, instead of asking me to replace the current Xcode command line tools, it actually just starts reinstalling it. So I'm gonna escape out of it. And at this point, presume that you have brew. That being said, we no longer need uh, this open anymore. And we can go ahead and install uh, Zish, but I think we should go ahead and install iTerm2 first. Now you could do the standard download and install that way, but now that we have Brew, we can actually do a very quick installation of, uh, of 
getting iterm2 using brew. And the command is brew cask install iterm2. And it's as simple as that versus clicking download and going all that, we're already here. And in this case, it's gonna let me know, hey, you already have uh, this, uh, this application uh, downloaded and maybe it'll let you know with an error. In this case, the terminal is letting me know that there's already an application uh, called iTerm in applications. So in my case, it's not actually going to install it because I already have iTerm2 installed. At this point, I am going to make the transition to iTerm2 and I am going to actually close the standard terminal because I'm not gonna be using it anymore. Now at this point, we are in the, the highest level, the root level of our system. You could see that by looking uh, using listing, listing uh, all the different directories of where we are. You can see applications and desktop. You can't see all of the hidden files here, but that is there as well. And at this point, we have iTerm2 installed, but we want to install Zish. Now, we could install Zish with the specific uh, documentation that is provided here. Uh, it's a little bit different. This is not showing it um, with, with Brew, I don't think. I think this is just directly installing Zish using the shell. So in this case, in our system, we wouldn't need to do that. So we can go ahead and uh, use a, a Brew install Zish. Now I already have a, um, I already have Zish installed, and it's saying that here, and it's saying, hey, you can also link to this version. I'm not going to do that right now, but you will install Zish. Everything will happen. The Zish so will happen. There's also a little bit more on here. If you want to see like the version that you're using, you can do Zish dash dash version. You can see I'm actually using 5.3, though I have 5.7.1 installed. I'm not actually going to make this fix right here. I didn't know that I that there was a version to bump to or uh, I guess update to. But you can see there's also some additional things like auto completions you can install uh, and and more. So that being said, I'll link this as well, which you can also find from the oh my Zish docs link. Now that we have iTerm2 installed, Zish installed, we want to get oh my Zish, it is the best. And essentially, we talked about what this is a little bit, but it is a incredible framework that will give us more plugins and more themes. We'll just keep it at that for now. You can read into it and look into it. And you can see here's the documentation for uh, themes, plugins, external themes, external plugins, customizations, uh, et cetera. There's even a, a cheat sheet you can look at. And this is actually found, I didn't click straight from it, but I think that's from the docs, it'll open that up. So you can get to that pretty quickly and that is incredible. There's the plugins one. It'll, it'll talk about different plugins you can get for different tools. So now we want to actually install uh, Oh My Zish. And so we are going to run this command that I am going to put in the comments below in our iTerm. And it's essentially a curl command that is going to go to the repository of Robbie Russell's Oh My Zish master branch, I would think, tools and you run the function install.sh. Now I already have Zish installed. Uh, so this particular thing, it's not saying, oh, you don't, you, you have, um, it's not referring to standard Zish. It's referring to oh my Zish is already installed. And I already have at the user level of my computer Zion, the user Zion, a dot oh my Zish. And I can essentially, I'd have to remove that file if I wanted to reinstall Zish, which I'm not going to do right now. So at this point, we actually have Zish. And if we want to uh, add, let's say, um, a specific, you know, we want to decorate our iTerm2 with one of those themes, I'm going to use, uh, go back to here, and you can actually click on themes. And this will open up and you can you can browse a bunch of different themes. The default is the Robbie Russell theme. Uh, and then there are a ton of other themes. You might've seen this theme, different colored though of Agnoster. And you can really look through these. And I just want you to keep in mind as you look through these, uh, which there is a mass, uh, vast amount of them, you can customize the colors and do some, you know, your own tweaks upon these and then export those out as well. So you can see that mine is pretty similar to the YS theme just cause I like it. It's clean and simple. Uh, and the colors are, I don't know. I just like the way that it looks, but I have a couple of different color themes on this particular actual full on theme. So usually you can click on more info um, or you can, you know, download it. Uh, in this case, it, it has some information on it. It'll even show you the source code. And usually depending on the theme that you're installing, uh, you might get um, 
uh, you might get some uh, some information on how to install it for the various environment. One that comes to mind is the Dracula theme, a dark theme for Vim and 50 plus apps. And so you can actually look and see that he has this theme across a bunch of different environments. And in this case, we'd like to look for the one that is iTerm, uh, which should be somewhere in here. There, let me see. Oh, iTerm, there it is. And so here is the term, uh, the the actual dark theme, and you can actually go ahead and follow the clone in which you are going to install it. So we'll just we'll just go ahead and do that. We're going to CD into downloads, and then we'll go ahead and run this clone. Although we can't do it with that dollar sign in front of it. And so now we've cloned into iTerm this particular theme. Now you can install it manually using this, um, or you could. Uh, and essentially he'll also even give you how you would activate it. And this is actually how you'd activate it with any other theme, but you'll go into your preferences. And then once you're in your preferences, you'll go to profiles and you can see there's a ton of different, uh, different options in general and everywhere else. And the, the tendency is to go to appearance and there are some things you can change here, but you'll go to profiles and you will click colors and you can see that there are a bunch of different colors for different things that are being used in this uh, in my themes. Now down here is a color presets and in here you can see there's some default presets from iTerm2 and you can see there's actually a couple here that are specifically ones that I've uh, imported in. And you can click import and you can select it if you would manually download it. Um, in this case, you know, what he's saying here is just select import and then select the, I, the Dracula um, the Dracula iTerm colors file. And then once you've downloaded, you can actually go ahead and select it. And you can see that the theme in the background changes to be Dracula. So with that being said, you've pretty much got the customization up to you at this point. You can set up, you know, more contrast. You can update a couple of different colors. Maybe if you'd like, you can, you know, set the cursor to be underlined vertical bar or box. I particularly like mine a box that's, that is, uh, um, that is, blinking or whatever you don't have to have it blinking you can do you know some different things in here uh, you can also change the actual font uh, which we'll get to in a second and this will allow you to choose different font types that you've downloaded in your system set them to a default size and whatever size you set it to is what the actual uh, terminal when you open it up to will be set to and there's just a, a couple different things like window you can set transparency if you really like to see your backgrounds behind it uh, you can do that. I like mine, you know, pretty decently dark. Uh, my theme is actually a theme called Night Owl by Sarah Drasner with a couple of minor tweaks. And I like to keep my my actual transparency enough to see behind it, but I don't like to lose the focus on the screen. Now you can also blur it. So if you want, you can blur what's behind it um, and, you know, add a blur. And then because of that, it won't matter if you have transparency, like you could have it super transparent uh, but the blur will lose the focus in front of it. So this is also an option. You might, maybe you wanna do, you know, something slight like that. Sometimes I like having a little bit of definition to see what's behind it. Uh, so you can tweak with it and get it to exactly what you want. We're not gonna do that here because that's for me and my own fun time. Now, that being said, we now have uh, the iTerm2 emulator. We've got Zish installed, and now we have uh, a specific theme. Before we get to fonts, we are going to actually add an alias. And so if you actually go back to uh, the highest level of your directory, and I think it is, hey, is that it? Yeah, so uh, ls space dash a, or, or ls a, I always forget because I don't usually list all in this environment. Uh, where did I go? Yeah, ls space dash a will show you all of your files in your high, in the, this highest level directory, including hidden files, which all the hidden files have a dot in front of them. And you can see that my bash profile uh, is here. Bash profile is going to essentially not be uh, activated now because we're using Zish, but everything that is in bash profile, you can take from your bash profile and put in your Zish file. So there is a file called Zish RC, and this is where we can add aliases or uh, update different things from Bash Profile. So I'm gonna actually CD into Zish RC, or actually instead I'm going to um, open this in my my uh, my directory, which ha actually shows hidden files. Yours may not, and you may need to uh, do a command in the terminal to make that happen. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just open it with 
VS Code. Once we open this up, you can see that there is some, some stuff that I have in here, and it'll actually export Zish to Oh My Zish, right? And this is a path to your Oh My Zish installation. And then you can set the name of the theme to load. Uh, so this is like what the theme will load on default. But since we changed our color system, um, we are using the Han Hanukkah theme uh, with our own color set. But in here, you can add aliases. So if I actually go ahead and comment these out, you can see what aliases are. And if you don't know what aliases are, essentially on macOS, uh, an alias is a small file that represents like another uh, object in a local remote or removable file system and provides like a dynamic link to it. So essentially, if you had, you know, npm install or you have a Docker command like docker compose up dash D, you can instead run DKC PUP and it'll run this entire command in your terminal. And so you can set up any alias you'd like uh, inside of your .zishrc file. You can install Powerline fonts. So these fonts will basically just make your terminal look better and you can get your own fonts. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just install one, one specific font. I am actually going to uh, look here and if I, if I actually look ls-a, I should have a fonts directory. So I have a fonts directory, so I'm gonna cd into that fonts directory. If you didn't have a fonts directory, that is okay. You can go ahead and run this command before you're in your fonts. Um, in here, you can see that I actually have uh, some fonts already uh, installed. There is one font that I particularly really like using. I've been using it for a long time now. You can go to uh, dank.sh and it is called Dank Mono. It's kind of like the sweet budget version of the other mono font that's like 300 something dollars. It's pretty cheap, 40 bucks versus, you know, uh, I think what it was like 300 or something. And it gives you also pre-built in ligatures. I really like ligatures. I like being able to just set this up real quickly. And then in the terminal, in the preferences, you can Go to the profiles and go to text and change your font here. That's why I have Dank Mono in my terminal. And you can actually increase the size as well. So if we were to go ahead and do, uh, let's just make it kind of larger, let's say 38 font, okay? And then we exit out of this and we open up a new window. You can see that it'll actually preload larger than the, the other one. Um, you can use Command minus and plus to enlarge your your uh, terminal and everything that's in it, including the font size. So that's some way you can navigate that pretty quickly. I think you can also uh, easily go up and when you clear, it doesn't actually clear unless you close the window. Also, the, this command line, iTerm2, has the uh, quick commands. You can use command one, two, similar to something like Slack to quickly navigate around. Uh, and then there is also, of course, ways to quickly open a new tab with command T. Uh, you can actually open a new window, which would be an entirely new uh, iTerm window. And that's kind of how you would use that. So that is everything for today. We aren't gonna install anything more, but we did get Brew installed. We installed iTerm2. We installed the Zish shell. We uh, looked a little bit at how you could configure that Zish shell and even take your bash profile stuff and put it in your Zish shell, as well as we figured out how to quickly set up Oh My Zish framework with Zish and the Zish shell and add our own custom theme color, our own uh, terminal, or sorry, our own fonts, and now we're good to go for the next step in development. So thank you for watching. I know this video was a little bit longer, but I did try to keep it as matter of factly as possible. And all the links will be below. If you have any questions, please comment with some kind of information like your Twitter handle uh, or tweet me. I'll put some of my information in there as well. And I'll try to help you out if you run across any issues. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.